Marching with friends and classmates, Laís Nacimiento is not only demanding better education and health care, she's also demanding equality. Even though people say we have no racism in Brazil, it's not true. We are the majority of the population, but we don't have economic or political power. Like most people in the state of Salvador, Laís is Afro-Brazilian. But unlike many of her fellow protesters, she didn't grow up in a middle-class family. She lives in a poor neighborhood on the outskirts of the city and is the first person in her family to ever go to university. Brazil is one of the most socially unequal countries in the world. We're selling the image that everything is good and will host a World Cup, but it's a country that denies opportunity to its own people. Brazil has the biggest black population of any country outside Nigeria. Colonized by the Portuguese, over 10 million African slaves were sent here. Salvador was the capital of the slave trade in Brazil, and Brazil was the last country in the Americas to abolish slavery. Now, despite the fact that over 80% of the population here considers itself to be Afro-Brazilian, the city of Salvador has yet to elect a black mayor. Although Afro-Brazilian culture is celebrated throughout the country and internationally, statistically, blacks here suffer the worst when it comes to access to education, health care, and high-paying jobs. Even with such inequalities, Professor Fabio Lima says fewer blacks than whites are going to the protests. Afro-Brazilians aren't mobilizing because many of them are poor and get aid from a paternalistic government. This creates dependency and makes it hard for them to question authority. But for young leaders like Laís and her generation, that may be changing. And now they are seizing the opportunity to make their voices heard. Rachel Levin, Al Jazeera, Salvador, Brazil. For more information, visit www.afroworldnews.com the only news network to highlight all news about Africa and Africans worldwide.